today on Rambling About Cars. We'll try not to go off the rails with off-roaders and Super Bowl commercials. Oh, it's that time of year. Oh, my God. We're talking Land Rover Defender in the snow, Ford Bronco with snow in, in it. In snow. <laughs> Super Bowl preview commercials from automakers, all kinds of great stuff. If there's time, we're going to do an off-road cheap car challenge. So without further ado, it's podcast time. I'm Christopher Smith, and Mr. Chris Bruce is across the way, but he's not the only one. Nope. We have a guest this week again, that Mr. Brandon Turkus is with us. Welcome. BT. Hey, howdy, guys. How is everyone? Yeah, good. You haven't been on in probably six months or so, it, so it's nice to yeah, have you back. But, uh, I, I listened to last week's pod. I, I oh, I'm very last, yeah. I'm very bad. Like ever since like you know work from home and stuff like that, I I don't I'm always behind on podcasts. But I listened to last week and enjoyed uh, the Chris Angel talk and mm -hmm. and all a that lot of people stuff. did. <laughs> a lot of people did. No, I, I would. We definitely need to have Alanis back on at some point. Totally. I I, I, would, so I I was at Rolex and that was the first time I'd met her in person after like you know we've interacted on Twitter for ages and that was the first mm -hmm. time I met her in person and. It, it was a riot. She is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. When her book is out. I really want to push to get her back on to oh, yeah. we'll, promote that, it, be talk happen. to her again, get all the ins. Just, yeah, that's going to be fun. That, read that'll the, definitely read happen. the book. But I mean, she also is just a powerhouse when it comes to racing. She has so, oh, totally. Yeah. She has so much knowledge on racing. It's, yeah. It's this, little, this, it's Tuesday broadcast, this Tuesday at broadcast, we're, we're going right up against racing spaces. So uh, we, yeah. we have well, competition. We're yeah, but live, this they don't see us till Friday. Yeah, they don't oh, see wow. us until right, Friday. Right. We're recording Tuesday because Wednesday is, of course, everybody knows the season finale of Mandalorian. I mean, Boba Fett. So, yeah, we're not going to get Mandalorian season three. That, that, that'll that take us off the rails. Seriously. Let's talk first about Land Rover Defender because Let's do that. Mr. Turkus, you have been driving a Land Rover Defender in the snow. And we just wanted to get some we wanted to get some some first person um, information on that. Tell us about your experience with a Land Rover Defender. Well, a quick yeah, preamble. So, a quick preamble. Last uh -oh. week, B Brandon, you live in Michigan. I live in Northwestern Ohio. We got snowpocalypse. I don't know how much snow you got. It wasn't that bad. It was, I wouldn't call it snowpocalypse. I mean, we called it before it happened. I, we I probably got, got we probably got about seven or eight inches up here. I I, oh, I went okay. out to snow blow like probably three or four times over about twenty four hours. It it wasn't bad. Okay. Uh, we've I got 10 worse. to 11 here, I would bet. So not, you know, stupid, but 10 to 11 is still a good bet. It's um, like eight, eight, anything from like eight to 12 is just annoying. Like it's, yeah, it's not exactly. great. It's just a pain in the ass. Yep. But you had a defender and yeah. you had lots of snow and we're going to be looking at some pictures. So let, yeah, let's the, talk the, defenders the, in the snow. The, the timing really worked out on it um, in a couple of ways. I, so I had the car during, you know, with this big winter storm bearing down on us. But I also had it, by some happy coincidence, at the same time as Seth Mirzma had a Defender 110. And, you know, we, we got together and we took some pictures at, uh, at a local metro park. And... Yeah, I mean, it was good to see the two side by side because, you know, you don't see a lot of 90s on the road. So, like, I'm starting to see more and more 110s. But to see them both side by side, you can really get an idea of, of the different proportions and you can look at, you know, how the two stack up. I I am personally a big fan of the 90. I, I really like the idea of a personal off-roader. Um, if I were going to buy a Wrangler or a Defender or a Bronco, it would be a two-door. Like there's, there's just no question about it. The The Defender 90 is interesting, though, because it it has the largest doors of anything I have, <laughs> I've ever experienced. I mean, they're big and they're heavy and they're long and they're, it's, it's all very awkward, but the proportions on it are so good. I love the the rear quarter panels, which are just this long, even piece of sheet metal with unbroken glass uh, above it. It's it's a great look. You know, the picture that that Smith is showing right now gives you a really good idea. You have that weird insert in the 110 that is totally absent in the 90, and mm -hmm. the proportions are better for it. Um, having it in Snowpocalypse, I was I was you know I was a little surprised. My my test model, it was a Defender 90 first edition. So it, no options. It was all kind of prepackaged stuff. And it had what, what Land Rover calls the off-road tires, which are 
actually terrible in the snow. <laughs> um, <laughs> Most off-road tires are. Imagine. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah. Well, I was I was kind of hopeful like it wouldn't be that bad, but I like I almost rear-ended someone on the way to visit Seth, to meet up with Seth. Um, wow. Which was the whole thing. Because, I mean, I don't know how it was down by you, Bruce, but, like, we got a lot of ice after the initial snowfall. Oh, we got so it the first. Road, the, the roads were really sketchy for, like, a few days after, yes, after the initial thing snowfall. Started. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, so we got we got a fair amount of ice. Um, I, I really look forward to all-wheel drive vehicles in the snow because, you know, you can slide them around, just add a little bit of throttle. But mm-hmm. the the Defender was is was a bit more, bit trickier. And... <laughs> Little yeah, little short I, wheelbase, it could be a little challenging. Yeah, I I didn't have any snap oversteer or anything like that, but but the the tires were were not conducive to to wintry shenanigans. Hmm. Wintry shenanigans. Well, I mean, and you so guys got are the ask, only one. You're not the oh, only one that had trouble with snowpocalypse. I mean, gosh, while it was snowing back there, I mean, I haven't put the top down in the Mustang for like you know a month or so, so. It was a little oh, cranky. Poor baby. <laughs> it was a little cranky. That 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 motor was a little noisy when I was putting the top down um, to enjoy the sixty degree weather I had here in South Dakota, where it's not supposed to do that. But sorry, I, hey, I, I, I had to get a little mention in there. It's, it's the new Florida, only without all the humidity and so. Uh, Brandon, real quick, are they the same color, or is one dark green and the other dark <laughs> no, gray? No, no, no. By by a funny coincidence, they are the same color. Mine obviously okay. has the the white roof, yeah, um, which is like a thousand dollar option, which is totally worth it. Um, I think as a general rule, if you're able to get a contrasting roof, you should get a contrasting roof. Um, it doesn't really matter the vehicle, but yeah, they are the they are the same color. I think it's called like Pangea green or something like that. Um, I'd have to pull them in Roni. But yeah, Seth Seth's was a little bit less optioned out. He had an SE. I had a uh, first edition. So slightly larger wheels. We both have a five spoke design. I think mine were were twenties. His were nineteens. Um, I don't really love either design. I'm I'm kind of of the school of thought that if you're going to buy a Defender, it should only come with steel wheels. Um, no, yeah, no. It, oh, Land Rover oh, offers them. Land Rover offers them, and oh, I know they do. Our, yeah. It is our responsibility to buy them because they are good. I'm I'm fine with that if I'm paying like twenty grand for the Land Rover, which obviously you're not. Yeah, you're absolutely not. Mine mine was just, mine was about sixty six grand. Um, right. It but it had it had the larger engine. It's a three liter turbocharged straight six, uh, mm-hmm. I believe, mild hybrid. So it's right. it's punchy. I mean, it's got it's got a substantial amount of power. I wouldn't get that one. Um, I would get the base four cylinder, which is the Ingenium engine that you can get in the XF and the F pace. And it's like two hundred ninety six horsepower, which should be plenty. Um, but the take rate is incredibly low. It's so low that Land Rover isn't even putting four cylinder Defenders into the press fleet. They they told me about a year ago that that is not going to happen. It's only going to be the straight six because that's all they're selling. Well, with so. that kind of power, I mean, then how how would you feel about the V eight? Yeah i I think that I think the the Defender ninety with a V eight is going to be a bit homicidal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've I've actually I have that I have that V eight yeah. I have a, a Jaguar F Pace SVR on the driveway right now. I've got a little like jaguar land rover thing going on right now um and the idea of a of a of a, a five liter supercharged v8 in a vehicle with such a short wheelbase <laughs> i mean you peg the yeah. throttle in the defender 90 and it feels like it's, it wants to do a wheelie so throwing a v8 into there is is just going to be wild i'm i'm really excited to drive that one so I, I'm curious, did yours have the trick bench seat that can either be a bench it seat did. or a console, depending on how you configure yeah, it? Yeah, I had the I had the uh, front row jump seat. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of that option in principle, in practice. <laughs> um, you know, I, I had a Defender 110 with the fixed center console about a year ago, and then I had this one with the jump seat. Um, it's cool. I, I think it's definitely more of a novelty thing. I think I would get tired of it kind of quickly because mm-hmm. you don't have a very large armrest when that seat is down. And when it's it's up, you have no armrest whatsoever. Yeah. 
So it's the type of thing I don't know who I'm glad it exists, but I don't know who it's for. I don't know yeah. who <laughs> like who that customer is that needs seating for six, especially when we know a defender at 130 is on the way with a third row. So that's gonna well, solve yeah, all those problems. The the odd thing is like you you know you have this this seat in a vehicle that has a more or less useless second row. So uh-huh. it's it's all the more strange. I mean, I like the idea of a defender as as a two plus two with two doors. Um, a six seat defender with only two doors is 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 a little bit weird. Um, but I, I I'm I'm with you, Bruce. Like I'm I'm glad it exists. So driving it so you said driving it in the snow wasn't great uh, did you get to take it off roading at all i mean obviously this is kind of pseudo off road yeah, i wouldn't count I, it but i i bombed around last weekend on some dirt roads um, okay how was that but it's it, it's really great like you know we're we're in, we're so fortunate that right that right now the 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 convergence of like the off road world with like more modern suspension technology Mm-hmm. means that you get you we're seeing off-roaders that are far more stable if you if you take a you know a jeep wrangler down some really washboard like rutted out roads it's going to be kind of difficult to manage and mm. something like a defender or a bronco or a raptor or even a trx for that matter they're they're so much more poised and so much more stable and you really feel confidence like attacking a, a, a rough road at speed um, in this in this case, like I didn't, you know, I wasn't like flying down these dirt roads, but it was enough sure. that I was, you know, forty five miles an hour, and it it was perfectly happy with it. Cool. Okay. And so, final question before we move on, and I, this is something I've been curious about. To me, and may, maybe I'm wrong about this. To me, it has always felt like the Defender and the Bronco, the the modern Ford Bronco, are kind of twins in a certain way that they came out at about the same time they're trying to appeal to kind of sort of the same customer there's a lot of similarities between them so what's your pick between those two vehicles oh man that is that is, that's a sophie's choice kind of thing <laughs> um if if i would live somewhere snowy and i had kids <laughs> Um, but you do live somewhere snowy. You do not. Have I do kids, live somewhere so. snowy. I do not. I do not have kids, but I live somewhere snowy where you know I can only use the convertible roof. Best case scenario, five months out of the year, mm-hmm. um, I would take the Defender. If Ford okay. came along and offered a fixed roof Bronco, that would be a very different story. Now, if I lived in, if I lived in L.A. or if I lived in Florida, which God. God, I never want to do. Um, Same. If I lived anywhere that didn't really have seasons and I didn't have kids, a a two door Bronco all the way. I'm I'm. I don't think it's any secret that I'm a huge Bronco fan. I've I've been hugely impressed with it. Um, I I think that would have to be my pick if if I lived somewhere you know that that I could really take advantage of it and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But a- as it stands, like living where I live now, even without kids, I think I'd have to go with the defender. Um, you know, especially, especially the 90, because you, you can get this really great uh, fabric covered uh, sunroof, mm-hmm. which, which my test car had. And so it's, it opens up and it's pretty expensive. You let a lot of light in a lot of wind in, um, uh, but at the same time, it's still much quieter at highway speeds than the Bronco, which yeah. suffers from from a lot of uh, wind noise. And as we're about to discuss, some, <laughs> a little, yes. some, little foreshadowing some, here. some other issues. Perfect segue. I, yeah, uh, you like that? I don't do this I, often, but uh, you guys set me up really well. Exactly. Smith, do you want to A little, tell a little the foreshadowing there because, <laughs> I mean... Brandon, I'm glad you're here because you have some pretty good experience with the Bronco. Um, and obviously, there have been some stories floating around the Internet. We started with one. Uh, I mean, this was back um, at just at the beginning of the year. There was a gentleman way in the northern reaches of Canada uh, that got slammed by a pretty hard snowstorm. Well, blizzard, you know, when you when you have yeah, that, that's a proper blizzard <laughs> when you have when you have wind driven snow, like 50, 60 mile an hour winds or even higher. 
yeah, that that's that's Blizzard goes out and uh, and if you're looking to, if you're following us on YouTube and you should be Motor One Podcast on YouTube, you can see what we're talking about here. Um, you went out the next day and his entire interior was filled with snow. And when I say entire interior, I, I mean, we are able to share some shots from, um, from a Facebook post that he put up, which has since been deleted, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, front seats, the dash, the steering wheel, the rear seats, the cargo area, everything had a thick layer of snow on it. Now That's I did probably an inch of snow, maybe yeah. two in spots. Yeah, yeah. The, the entire interior, and I didn't, uh, I didn't use photos. He also shared photos um, under the hood. He opened up the hood, and the engine bay was also packed with snow. So I mean, this was this was a just a serious, seriously hardcore uh, a snow event blizzard, and he was slammed pretty hard online from from what I was gathering at, at various forums. Um, where people were claiming uh, this this isn't real. He's making this up. Or so he, he left windows down or something because there's there's no way this lives, <laughs> this man lives also, on the I'm, shore of the Arctic Ocean. Like yeah, this is truly uh, north. So one thing that stands out to me right away, and on I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and I'm not gonna doubt the guy. Like if he says it happened, like I believe you know it it may have happened. It strikes me right away that there's very little snow on the windows or the doors themselves. True. And I don't think, you know, I've, I've, I've taken the roof, the roofs on and off Broncos a fair few times. I mean, I, I, I'm familiar with the procedure, um, particularly in the back with the four door Bronco. I, I don't really know how that, how that much snow gets inside unless you let it in. There is a, certainly a lot of snow in there, and that's that is that is that is a dramatic amount of snow, and I, that I, is I've seen these pictures amount. already. But the the lack of snow on the windows, the relative, you know, there's some on the doors, on the rear doors, um, but the, but especially on the windows, like that would be coating to the windows if if it were coming in in such quantities, everything would be covered, not just the seats. I think so that's a good it is though, if you look along the roof rails or the you know the the roll, it is along, along the roof, roof rails. So I, there, I don't think I don't think the guy took the roof off or something like that. But you know, we live in a world where I saw a guy on on TikTok, which is the worst service mankind has ever created. <laughs> that it, by you know, Twitter for that uh, right. <laughs> record, no, yeah. that he he literally he literally crashed his plane for views. Like the yeah. FAA is investigating this guy. Because he stopped his engine midair and bailed out and got it on on TikTok, and like so that's that's the world that we live in. Well, I want to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. I know that Ford has had an incredible number of issues with yeah. with the roofs and with the supplier for the roofs specifically. Mm -hmm. um, I will say I've talked to a lot of Ford employees. I've never, and this is on the record, I've never had it had anyone any manufacturer representative so willingly willingly throw a supplier under the bus <laughs> um it's been very very clear that that the roof problems that ford is suffering are are solely on webasto who is the the supplier and so i i well, wouldn't be surprised if there was some some sort of issue going on but i also wouldn't doubt that there was you know some foul play in this particular case well and let's that's yeah, go for it, Smith. I'll say, I mean, let, let's let's go a little bit further down this road because I did have an email conversation, a message conversation with the person on this first Bronco issue. And I need to clarify first because there are more that we're going to get to here in a minute. Um, I mean, you're, you're talking about people doing things for views. And my my impression was, uh, uh, what are the views? He shared this on a Facebook group. It, this wasn't a video. He shared it on a Facebook group, uh, which the it's the post has since been removed. Um, he swore up and down in that Facebook group. Yes. The top was latched. The windows were up. Um, he never fully removed the roof. He said he had it uh, partially removed earlier in the year, but everything was back in place. We had a conversation just over, um, over email. He reaffirmed. He says, I love my Bronco. It cleaned up fine. I'm not trying to get anything from Ford. I was just really shocked at this brand new vehicle going out and and finding it full of snow. So, I mean, 
is it is it possible that he inadvertently left a window down that that could very well be the case sure. and and this is this is a case of him just trying to cover himself if yeah say yeah. a year or two down the road now all of a sudden there are some electrical issues ford says oh well you must have left your windows down he can go back and say well no i didn't look at this you know that that's that's certainly a again you know I, I i don't want to cast out on the guy i was not there i don't know what the storm was like i've i've you know i've lived in detroit all my life i know what a winter storm can be like i'm yep. you know I'm I'm not putting it past that something like this could happen, especially considering the the many publicized issues that Ford has had with these roofs and the amount of wind noise that you experience when you drive a Bronco at highway speed. Um, it is it is pretty pretty severe. So I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna doubt the guy, but I'm also not going to entirely you know take him at his word that this is a thing that that is a big problem. Is it? possible there's a manufacturing defect that's affecting a few broncos yeah i think that's pretty fair because as you guys mentioned there are other reports of this well and speaking of we're going to jump to that right now just a few days ago um this popped up on the bronco 6g forum another ford bronco gets snowy interior this one wasn't nearly as bad however and this this was a, a person that i also talked to through through uh just the message system through the forum um, just kind of trying to get a little bit more of the story. This was also in Canada, not as far north. The last few weeks, folks, so the, for those of you that may not be in the United States listening, there have been a lot of snowstorms, like everywhere but where I live in South Dakota, where it's just so, been amazing. But there's not nearly enough snow in this one. But the owner went out to check. This was another blizzard where the, they're getting 50, 60 mile an hour winds. The owner went out to check because... The owner saw that previous story about the snow just flooding that Bronco interior, went out to check, and lo and behold, snow was coming into his Bronco as well. It was coming around you know that uh, that second rib right there that we're looking at right now. I'm um, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at this one, and immediately it feels more plausible to me because of mm -hmm. the way that the snow has accumulated. And if you go back to the previous image, Smith. Oops, wrong way. Ads. Live, live, Lots live of television. So go back to that last one with the seat. The, the seat, right. The, the way the way that it accumulates there on the seat, like that seems consistent. And, and mind you, I do not have a any knowledge of, you know, computational fluid dynamics or anything like that. Like, <laughs> what? But I, I'm just I'm just someone that has grown up in a place that gets a lot of snow. The way that that came in is feels very consistent with snow entering a gap at speed. Right. And. and and to let people know uh, that that are just listening here, um, these images show it, it's a four door Bronco. So we're looking at the driver's side rear seat, um, and we're seeing a pretty good accumulation of snow on the seat back. That's not now, the driver's seat, front driver's seat. That, that's, that's not, not the, uh, that's not the front driver's seat. That's, that's no, okay. okay. You can see the the strut over the left. Yeah, shoulder that's 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 oh, the you're rear right, you're seat. Right, you're right. And when cool. you look right above it, uh, we'll, we'll flip to yeah. a shot right above it. You have that. You have. The, I think it's like the second hinge in the roof there, where this, you can this really one see feels, snow is coming in. This one feels immediately more plausible to me. These 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 seem like things like the way that the ice is formed and the way the snow has gotten in. It feels more consistent with the manufacturing defect in that it's not something insane. It's a relatively small amount. That well, got those in. are the I, either because points you would expect to see like those are exactly, exactly if you it, look at it, oh that's the most likely point where there would be some sort of opening for snow exactly. small amount small that. amount but we still I mean here's another image we still have snow piled up on that back door so we have snow going all yeah, the, along the, the passenger the side back, the, and again he went out to check in the middle of this storm this this didn't this didn't endure yeah, so the, duration. The the back of the the back of the Bronco, like the cargo area, really confuses me that there's snow in there because that is the rear piece on both the two door and the four door Bronco. Basically, on the two door Bronco from the B pillar back, and on the four door Bronco from the C pillar back, is a single piece that it, it and it's a, a substantial piece of of glass and plastic, and so. Either the person that had this took the roof off and did not bolt it back down properly, or there's some kind of manufacturing defect. In this case, it seems like the latter to me. Well, and when you go through the pictures, 
Um, and these these are screenshots taken from a video. If you go to motorone.com to search up Ford Bronco Snow, um, we'll have a link in our in our podcast article on Friday too. Um, he shared a video over at the Bronco 6G forum. And these are screenshots from that video. And as the video pans around, I mean, you can see the snow actually layers lightly all along the driver's side. You don't really see anything on the passenger side, but it also gathers up on the uh, on the headliner the, all the way across. The and, other uh, thing, mm -hmm. the other thing I would be very interested to learn is if these roofs have already been replaced. Are these vehicles that have their original Webasto roofs that had the scaling issues, or have they been replaced with re like new manufactured roofs? Mm -hmm. And I'm. I, I, again, I don't know, but it's entirely possible that in addition to the scaling issues, the original roofs had some some poor fit problems. Um, maybe there's a problem with the the Broncos themselves, where the fit the fitting or the the routing of the water, like the insulation or whatever, is not in the right place. Um, well, for what and, it's and worth, I go ahead. I was going to say it has before. I, I reached out to this person directly. We had a little bit of conversation. In the, in the thread, uh, he pledged up and down. All the windows were up. The roof was fastened securely. Um, he confirmed that with me directly through messaging. Um, there has been discussion that that I guess that I'm not familiar with the Bronco, and maybe, Brandon, you can shed a little light in this. I guess that connection back there can be a little finicky um, back by the back seat. It can yeah, be a little finicky to get yeah, that, that down secure. Yeah, on the four door, it's definitely it's definitely the four door is definitely tricky, trickier to put together than the two door. Okay, which is I yet mean, another reason you should buy the two door. And and he <laughs> pledges. I mean, he pledges everything was down securely. But, um, this time it, around, I did also reach out to Ford, and uh, and I'd like to read because because Brandon, you said you were you were talking with people, and they were they were pretty adamant about a supplier issue. Yeah, um, and mind you, this was this was a while ago. This was yep. this was back during the summertime, so. Well, Ford's, was, Ford's statement to me on this situation. They were pretty um, adamant. I, I, um, I read that statement. We've only seen something like this when the roof has been left open or unlatched. The customer should flag this concern with their dealer to inspect what might have happened in these photos. If there is an issue, it would be covered under warranty. However, until an inspection is completed, this is all speculation. And yeah, absolutely right. And and we mentioned in the article, you know, user error or is it a design issue? Now, the the other thing is we have when have we heard issues about Broncos letting water in during rainstorms? Surely some of these things have been been out in the out in the public during heavy wit heavy rains and heavy winds. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, you know, so I, I mean, I, maybe maybe that's a little more I, I hate to say expected because soft top. I mean, they they should. Is it though? You know, I mean, I mean, I, snow, I've, snow I've, has I've the had, ability to get in and 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 float around in ways that that water can't. I mean, especially if I've had I've had a lot of I've had a lot of Wranglers and I've never had this issue. <laughs> a lot of the Wrangler people have been saying that, too, for the last. Yeah. Couple of years. Yeah. Oh, but, no problem but, with my Wrangler. <laughs> but what yeah. I'm saying is, you know, Ford and I again, I haven't been to the Ford where the, the facility where they build the Bronco, but at every engineering or every manufacturing facility I've been to. The cars go through a wet wet uh, wet weather test where mm -hmm. they're they're basically driven into a giant booth and pounded with heavy rain, and they're looking for leaks because you know these sure. are big issues. Mm -hmm. So, I again, I don't know what these people went through. I I, I don't want to. I, I I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but based on my experience, there's you know, it it leans towards driver error. Or owner error, but again, I don't know for certain. I'm, and I'm and trying, I'm and I'm, the I'm trying you. to walk I'm, a pretty careful line here. Like I don't want to. Of course, no, we people. all have to because we're yeah. all you know. I, I, I want to say, say very clearly, I have no idea if there's an issue here with the top. I just found it interesting that a second case popped up showing something very Absolutely. similar, um, especially with everything we've been hearing about issues that Ford's been having with the roofs. Um, the issues we've heard from more than a few people just on on wind noise alone. Now here's the here's wind the noise plot issue twist. Is here's the plot twist. We actually received an email from an, an anonymous person, and I'm I'm trying to get more information here. Can't share anything right now, but we got pictures showing a third Bronco with more snow intrusion, a little bit more than what we just saw. Not nearly as much as what we saw in the first one in Canada, but. 
I, I'm, I'm trying to get some more information, confirm that. It seems something at the very least is is going on. And it, you know what? You have a brand new vehicle. It's interesting if the top does have a little bit of an, just a ceiling issue in general, if it is a little tricky to use. I mean, maybe it's just a case of, okay, owners need to be better edu- educated by their dealers on what's going on. But um, I mean, and, uh, Bron- Bronco is Bronco is still cool, but uh, the, it, the, it, the it, it's interesting to me, at least. The curious thing to me is that anyone that has driven a Jeep Wrangler and has taken the roof off is going to be familiar with the procedure for doing the same thing in a Bronco. It is quite literally identical. I mean, the latches might not be in the same place, but it is pretty darn similar. Um, so I don't know. The The thing is, you know, you, we're not seeing these issues from Jeep owners. And like I said, the, the procedures are similar. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, kind of pushes me in the direction of manufacturing problem rather than owner error. But at the same time, we're not hearing about flooded Broncos yet. Right. So I don't know. It's 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 going to be really interesting to watch and see how mm-hmm. Ford is handle it. I, I will handles it. And I will say Ford has been extremely good about addressing owner issues with the roofs. The fact that they're replacing all the roofs yeah, with that's good. new units is really impressive um you know the the bronco that or the bronco two-door that i had back in august had some scaling issues in it there i think i mentioned it in the review and it was very minor like i was like i was out there looking for it it it, it did not stand out so i think the fact that ford has been so forthcoming about how they're going to fix this for owners is is important um I'm I'm I am curious to see how this plays out. Maybe people will get a, a second free roof. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, and, and I I do want to point out I have also read um, in various Bronco forums of people that have said, "Hey, my Bronco was outside in a snowstorm, not one tiny lick of snow inside." So at the very least, it seems like there is something going on, but it's isolated. I- don't yeah. don't really know, but we're we're seeing it on both sides. Um, apparently, there's there were like like hundreds of Broncos parked somewhere that haven't shipped yet um, in a location yeah, at map at Michigan assembly plant. In oh, oh, that's, about, okay. They just got about hit. 45 minutes South of me. Okay. They just got hit with a snowstorm and people are outside taking photos. Like, I wonder what their interiors <laughs> look like, you know, I, 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 I will say, um, actually I completely lost, lost my train of thought. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how Ford handles this. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, just well, interesting off-roading if, stuff with the Bronco being as popular as it is. I still, I still think it's sweet. There's actually, um, I just saw there's a brand new Defender 90 for sale, like a mile and a half from me, just sitting in somebody's driveway, and that's hmm. the first Defender I've seen out here. And it's, it's like, no, I think I still rather have the Bronco. So yeah. I, I, I am, I am a the Bronco is one of those, and, and I said this when we did our best and worst cars of the year post at the end uh, about a month and a half ago, like the Bronco uh, on the list of cars that I could reasonably go out and order and put in my driveway tomorrow. The Bronco is pretty much at the top of my list. And I'd be I, cool with I, Steelys on that too. I, I can't have Steelys I, on a defender, but I could do Steelys on a, on like a, just a, a mid-level Bronco. I, I genuinely love, like I would have a two door Bronco badlands, non Sasquatch manual transmission, in a heartbeat eruption green Great. like i'm yeah. i'm down like i i love the idea of it it's it's great to drive um i'm i'm pretty confident that, that if there is an issue here it's a very isolated issue affecting a few owners um hopefully it gets it gets sorted out because you know i i even as like a fan of the bronco i'd be really upset if i came out and there was you know an inch of snow in my car one morning oh sure yeah it's uh, this is Total, total, total speculation on my part. So, but just looking at the evidence, looking at the examples that we've seen, not even the evidence, it almost makes me wonder if it's a temperature issue somehow, since it's always related to the snow. Whether you know, well, it's, it's happening plastic- in Canada. It's it's happening in Canada. It's not happening in the U.S. yet. True. I mean, I would well, I we, would think that the snow. We don't know where this north. email came from, though. From from this uh, from no, this anonymous but, person. Uh, 
but is could it be an example of the plastic gets too cold, it gets brittle, it cracks, it lets nose in, something like that, where it's only going to be a certain population of videos and or videos of uh, vehicles, and that is why we're not seeing it in places like Florida, Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, you know, places that get lots of rain that that could be a reason. And we don't know. That is total speculation. But it, you look at this population of vehicles and it makes you wonder whether temperature could be part of it. Could sure. Be. Could be. Uh, to be I'll tell you what, if, if, if there's ever a case for, for doing a fixed roof Bronco that I was talking about earlier, <laughs> like here it is. That's well, true. <laughs> there you go. You can't have any roof problems if it's just bolting up. Well, I shouldn't say that. You could probably find something to do wrong. Sunroofs, man. Sunroofs are dangerous. Sun, sunroofs. Sunroofs. T-top Bronco. What about anyway. you? Do, do you have a Bronco or do you know somebody that has a Bronco? And are you having problems? Are you not having any problems? Let us know. Email podcast yep. at motorone.com. Comment on our YouTube page, Motor One Podcast on YouTube. Comment on our article that goes up every single Friday at motorone.com. Let us know what's going on there. Let us know if you like the Bronco over the Defender. Let us know if you like the Wrangler. Let us know if you have like an old international scout that you just will not get rid of. <laughs> yeah, I will totally. say Bronco versus Defender. There's not a bad choice there. No, you're going to be okay. thrilled with either one. They're both fantastic. It's really not. What are we doing next, Bruce? Well, we're going to move on to I'm trying to think of a good way to do the segue. So we are going to f- move on to Ford's crosstown rival at one point, at least if we consider it in a corporate sense, because we have Stellantis, which used to be FCA, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, which used to be, well, Daimler Chrysler, and then no, used to be Chrysler. This isn't okay. a segue. This is like you're like channeling to China here. Yeah, it's a bad sick. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about the Alfa Romeo Tenale. Yes, uh, because I spent a week with this thing entirely on my mind, and I need yes. to get all of this information out and just purge it all. So this is my Alfa Romeo Tenale purge. It yes, is and it's Alfa- worthy, too. Uh, I think it looks great. I'm not a big no, SUV or crossover that's person. That's the part I disagree with you on. But I think it, I think it looks good. That is so. If you're watching on YouTube right now, we are looking at it a uh, three quarter angle, kind of above looking down on it. This is the best looking angle at this car because it accentuates all of its kind of curves and sculpting and things like that. If you, it, it, the other images will be shown in a second, just straight on. I described it to my wife as the Alfa Romeo car because it just, it from some angles, it just looks so generic in a way like you describe a crossover you look at this and then you yeah that, that's that's just a crossover um and again that is totally well, show, show us some show us some of these angles bruce i'm gonna i'm on it hold on a second for me um i mean and i'm i've never been one that's a big fan of alfa romeo either but i think i, think I i'm a looks, huge fan of alfa good. romeo huge fan of alfa they they make the in both the segments they compete in they are the best driving cars in the class, like bar none. I take a, I take a Stelvio over. Fortunate over a that they're not the most reliable cars in that class. Well, but. no, it, but you know what? I I am a masochist and I like unreliable <laughs> cars. Okay. Anyway, so here we are looking at it. Uh, this will be going through a slideshow of it as we go through. Um, this next picture, if you're watching on you, this is kind of the one that. I don't know if it's the lighting. I don't know what it is. It's the lighting. It's like half of it's in shadow. It it does nothing good for that vehicle. But Alfa Romeo finally has a new vehicle in its lineup. You know, the 4C, for what it was, it was an interesting little sports car. It's dead and gone. So for the last couple of years, they've had the Giulia and the Stelvio. They finally have another thing to sell, and that's the Tenale. Excuse me. It is a small crossover, compact crossover, and kind of the big, big deal about it. It is the first time ever you can get uh, an electrified Alfa Romeo. This is, you know, uh, it is available in the United States with a plug in hybrid powertrain. In Europe, you're going to be able to get it with a mild hybrid and a diesel and fun stuff like that. But in the US, we just get it with uh, the plug in hybrid or the uh, the GME two liter uh, turbocharged four cylinder, and that thing makes um, so this is the base engine makes two hundred and fifty six horsepower. The plug in hybrid makes two seventy two. 
So it's it's not a big upgrade. Um, uh, yeah. So you guys are looking at some pictures now. Before I kind of keep talking, what do you think of it? Well, how do you think it looks? So am I wrong? I, I, I I'm going to sit back an, and let Brandon run with this one, man. Okay. I, so I, I just shared an image, uh, a link to an image in our our private chat of the Alfa Romeo 156 GTA, which is a oh, Alfa a from I, from I believe the late 90s. It, but in the, the front end, I I see I see real similarities with this car. I think you're blind, but we'll show the folks and let them make that d- decision. I'm, uh, I'm making that happen here right now. Keep talking. Oh, okay. You got it. Okay. Um, yeah, it it's an important car for Alfa Romeo. Certainly, I don't love the styling. I do like a lot of the other things about it. Um, so it's, with- it's a segment they absolutely need to be playing in. Like totally. they they have been they've been out of this segment for far too Ever? long. They've never yeah, had a I compact mean, crossover, at least in the United States. So, well, yeah, you know. I mean, they had, they had, a, so in Europe, they had a compact offering with the Mito, which is yes. a truly bizarre was, looking vehicle. Oh, I yeah. love the Mito. It came out when I was living oh. in Germany and I used to Have love you, seeing them on the road. Ah, uh, I see. I, you know, back when, back when the FCA thing first happened, you used to see Mitos and Juliettas on the roads in Detroit all the time. Hmm. Like back when they were developing the compact wide platform that underpins mm-hmm. like the Cherokee and the 200 the and the Dart and some other stuff. Yeah. You'd see those on the road all the time. Um, I I definitely see a fair amount of like 156 in this car. It's it's really like the 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 gap between the headlights and the triangular grill. I, I apologize, yeah, Alfa Romeo man. fans. I don't remember the name for that. Um, there is an actual like name for that that little gap. Or for the the grill itself, uh, the um, grill is the scudetto, I believe. That's or that's what it scudetto, is. Scudetto, yeah. scudetto, something like that. That sounds um, right. I have been the Dorito, in Alfa so. Romeo for the last five days. Like, I, I'm on it. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, uh, like, look at look at the look at the way, like, look at the one five six, and then look at the Tonale and the character lines that you have on the hood that draw their draw themselves in towards the scudetto. Look at the gaps between the headlights and the the grill itself. Um, look at the, like the lower, the lower intake is very wide and has like this little connector at like that bisects it. Like that's all that. very one, five, six to me. Okay. I, I, I will give you that part at least, at least the lower, yeah. the lower fascia has similarities. I kind of see what you're saying with the headlights and whatnot. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get to the vehicle itself in the United States. Um, uh, Smith, could you start that slideshow for me while I'm talking? Um, it's hard for me to talk and uh, yeah, I'll just, just go ahead and bring it up i'll i'll uh i'll pull it all up here okay um disappearing because i am dry real quick <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll, we'll talk without him anyway so in the united I'm states it's going to be available in three trim levels um you're going to be able to get it in sprint ti and veloce uh in that order sprint will only be available with the two liter four turbocharged four cylinder ti will be available with either the two liter turbo or the phev engine and then veloce exclusively with the phev engine um what we found out today and uh we kind of got the scoop on this is uh when I attended the the um, press round table, they just said that the price would be competitive. Um, someone talked to a member of our staff from Alfa Romeo and told us that it'll start in the high $30,000 range and top out in the low $50,000 range. So you kind of read between the lines there. That means a Sprint 37, 38 and a Veloce well-optioned low 50 52 oh. 53 something along those lines well we get we get we got to remember too the federal tax credit for phevs yeah 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 you're going to be able to take that off that's true that's true i i always just go by the number but you're right that there is going to be a tax credit on top of that but even if you just take that base number that's very competitive um, with the other small European premium crossovers that are out there. It's close to a BMW X1. It's almost identical when I was looking to add it to an Audi Q3. It's very close to a Mercedes-Benz GLB. It's going to be competing in that segment um, just very closely, at least in terms of price. 
you get on the inside, all models come with a, I want to make sure I get this right. You get a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster and a 10.25 inch infotainment system. Um, it's running on Stellantis's Uconnect 5 software, which I think so this is only the second vehicle to get it. No, so there there are quite a few vehicles that have Uconnect Five at this point. This is okay. The I was thinking first. it was just the Ram was the only other one. Okay, Ra so no, I'm I'm not even sure if Ram has it actually. I know Grand Cherokee and Grand Wagoneer and Grand Cherokee oh, yeah. L and Pacifica all have it. Um, oh, Pacifica, Ram, has I think it's still. I didn't know. Hmm. No, Pacifica Pacifica has Uconnect Five. Um, I think Ram is still running a unique version of Uconnect Four on that big like 12.1 inch or whatever it is uh portrait style display but if you if anyone here has driven the the current julia and stelvio they they operate on a infotainment system that is unique to alfa romeo um they are the only brand within like the old fca that ran on that um even maserati ran on a version of uconnect Mm -hmm. So this is the first alpha to to use Uconnect, which is which I, is a good thing. Um, you know, it, I I had no qualms with the infotainment on the Julia and Selvio, but it was not as good as Uconnect, which is one of the best systems on the market. So the fact that this is getting Uconnect five is really exciting to me. I think it's a very good thing on on Alpha's part. Just looked it up real quick. 2022 Ram models are getting Uconnect 5. Oh, so, all right. I haven't, okay. I haven't been in one of those yet. <laughs> I've just I looked it up just to confirm. But yeah, so one of, I guess, the, you'd say the few vehicles within the Stellantis uh, brand range to have it. But, you know, it's good for them to be in this segment. I don't love the looks, but looks are subjective. But I think if you look at it on paper, especially against the competitors, it's impressive. Um, one thing, so I actually forgot to include this in the story and it is actually kind of interesting. So this will be a scoop for any podcast listeners there you during go. the media round don't, table. Don't tweet your blogs. Don't tweet your blogs. Uh, okay. I'll ask, I'll ask if we should do a story on it, be able to write it before then. Um, uh, the, um, the boss of Alfa Romeo said that they are considering so at the end of 2022, there's no decision yet. At the end of 2022, they will consider, consider whether or not to build a quadrifolio edition of the Tenale. So yes, no decision we yet. Absolutely, we should but, absolutely write that up before <laughs> before yeah. this podcast goes out. Like well, as Tuesday in Tuesday now, it'll be Friday then. I got plenty of time. As but, in tomorrow. Okay. We yeah. got us. Go to motor1.com and look at the article that we just talked about. It's there. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, there. it's already live. It's like magic. Um, so maybe, Ooh. so basically put a question mark, but it's not ruled out. It's a possibility is how that goes. Yeah. And that's, that's super exciting. That's already got me thinking like, what are they going to do? Because I don't think they can stuff the 2.9 liter twin turbo V6 in this, I don't in, think so. in no. this car. So is there, is there some other engine? Is it going to be a, a PSA engine, uh, some form of two liter turbo, which is what is in everything in this segment. Um, that's really exciting to me that, you know, we haven't had a, a, or a quadrifolio that has had anything but the twin turbo 2.9. Sure. So that is, that is hugely exciting. Um, I think that it'll be a good thing for this product. If you look at that segment, we're already starting to see, you know, GLA, uh, GLA 45 and GLB 35 have been around for a little while now, a couple um, years. in so, Europe. Yeah. In Europe, you have the SQ3 and the RSQ3. Um, BMW, I don't think there's a M version of the X1, but there no. is of the X2. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get an X2 M40i, I want to say. I don't know. BMW's nomenclature is all screwy. Um, so yeah, there, there's, definitely, there's definitely demand in that segment for something sporty. And I'd already be willing to bet that this is going to be the best driving car in the segment because the Julia and the Stelvio are the best driving cars in their segments. Could be, but you know, can, that's. Can, can we talk about the name? Because I don't sure. love the name. At least it has like, a name. It's not alphanumerics that mean absolutely nothing. Yeah, Tonale, well, I mean, it's, is, a, it's thing, a tone. Is, it sounds like something. 
Alfa Romeo has history of using alphanumerics. Like it's it's not some it's not like a a, a Kia thing where they renamed the Optima the K5. Like Alfa Romeo sure. has been using alpha alphanumeric alpha a l f a numerics mm-hmm. for job. for a hot minute i mean you have the 156 the 157 so on and yep. so forth so yeah but they uh, also have regular five. names i i think i think going with an actual name here instead of an alpha numeric i like it and maybe it's because i pretty much hate alpha numerics in general i feel like the only reason they exist outside of bmw or really mercedes is because everybody else thought ooh we'll just copy bmw or mercedes Mm-hmm. Um, I like the idea of having a name. I think it brings more of an emotional connection from the buyer to the vehicle. I, I think a I'm lot not of automakers don't have a name. Miss it. You just don't. You just don't like Tonali. Yeah, I just it it means nothing. It's just it's just there. It is just you know some some folks in in Milan were sitting in a room and decided let's call it Tonali. I mean, to my knowledge, and Julia means nothing except it does have a legacy within the brand, has, and they're exactly. referring to something. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, you couldn't call this Julietta because the Julia is a sedan and Julietta. And mind you, I don't speak Italian, but if I'm, I'm understand, understanding it correctly, Julietta means little Julia. Correct. Yeah. So this is not a little Julia. It is not. So you, so you couldn't do that. I mean, I think I think uh, an alphanumeric or some other, you know, something distinctly italian like stelvio is distinctly italian even though it's the first time it's a swiss they've used place. that uh, is, isn't the is, stelvio pass in italy and switzerland doesn't it i thought it was on the Sw- italian swiss border okay so we might both be right um yeah so maybe name it after another pass you know something between you know there has to be another one stelvio is the famous one but call it the milano call it the alfa romeo milano Okay. Can we can we call it Tonali? <laughs> I, I want to stick with Tonali. I'm the musician here, I guess. I like Tonali. It's a it gives me it gives me like a comforting. It feels like I should be, um, you know, trumpeting its greatness, if you will. I, I yeah, I I'm think cool Tonali is a fine name. I, I there's it's fine. I just I'm not. I, I I just don't love it. It doesn't it doesn't speak to me. It doesn't speak to me the way that Julia or uh, Stelvio even does. That said, I am I am super super excited to drive this car. Like that is going to be one that I am going to campaign pretty hard to do the first drive on. I'm I'm really excited for that. I've been waiting for uh, a smaller Alpha crossover for a long time. I think that'll be great for the brand. My only complaint: get rid of the ridiculous Lamborghini Countach phone dialer wheels. They uh, they no, go away. Away. All those are those during the presentation. No, those aren't going away. I, I, you're fired. I'm not. I'm not, fired. I'm not a fan. I've been fired before. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of those wheels. I just. I Alfa Romeo has been doing those those five hole wheels for a hot minute, and I am here for it. And you know what? Evolve or die. No, 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 it's a crossover. Just just give me a nice simple set of elegant five spokes. Nothing too fancy. We're good to go. I would not buy an Alfa Romeo without that style of wheel. And I'm thrilled that they offer it on the Stelvio and the Julia as well. All right. Okay. That's fair. Let's move on. <laughs> so we are. You guys are so regretting me having, having me on this podcast. Not it's great. I love it. <laughs> not no, in a bit. love having you on. We just <laughs> we have a good time. Um, so we don't, we're running somewhat short on time, but let's hit something that is going to be very timely for when you're listening to this episode. Oh, yes. And that is, is that the Super Bowl is going to be happening this coming weekend. Um, this will be coming out Friday, so it'll be happening on Sunday. As of this time, we only know about a handful of the ads that are coming, but that doesn't mean we can't talk about them. And because the and I've said this before and I'll say it again because the United States copyright system is broken. We are not going to be showing you any of the ads here, but we yeah. will be telling you about what we know. Are we about. are we even allowed to call it the Super Bowl? Are we are we supposed to call I'm it not, the big game? We're 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 a, think we're a only if you're promoting it. Yeah, we're we're a media outlet. I think I think we're okay for media outlets. Yeah, okay. it's only if you're I'm advertising. Just making it, sure that Roger Goodell isn't gonna bust down your door. We're, we're we're reporting. Hey, hey, bring it on. I've got a few words for him. I've got a few words about the NFL in general. And I've had a few, yeah. so we better not get we better not get sidetracked. This is getting to be a really angry episode of the show, Ooh, guys. Let's. Gary Springer's on the other side of this Dallas door. He's about to bust in here. Anyway, so anyways, commercials for the big game 
Well, well first we one that we heard game. about, first one that we got to see at least was Nissan will be advertising the new Z and the Aria, and they got a star studded mm-hmm. ad. They have Eugene Levy, who has been a comedic actor for decades. And uh, that probably- shocked me because I, I just got to jump in here. The makeover they gave him when I first saw like a still image is like, did Fabio get old? <laughs> I'll tell you what he, he does. He looks like a, like a funny Fabio. He's it got he's got this like, kind he can, of rugged... he can absolutely like rock that. I mean, I mean, trim up those eyebrows a little bit. And, and oh, he's no, like you the next have action, eyebrows. He's like the next action star. So wait, it's real quickly, I'm happy you mentioned thing. that. I don't know if you guys read the story, but they are Nissan is going to release a limited number of action figures of Eugene Levy and his long hair look. <laughs> oh, I gotta, that, I gotta a, get one of those. So that, I don't know I, who I at Nissan PR anymore. we have to talk to, but that is a thing that exists. Dan Pass, if you're listening to this, please call me tomorrow. <laughs> We need, um, we need yeah. some action figures. I can so pose it back here with Voltron Defender of the Universe. So we've got Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara, both of whom were on the TV show Shit's Creek. Um, very good mm-hmm. show if you haven't seen it. Um, uh, Danai Guerra. Is that how you say her last name? Jera? Danai. Or Guerra? Danai oh, Guerra. Denai so Guerra. she was in, uh, she was from, she played uh, Okoye in the Avengers and Black Panther movies. Uh, yeah, Black Panther. Uh, she was yeah. Michonne in The Walking Dead. Um, oh, great actress. Like really, really yeah. great actress. Um, Dave Bautista, who is also a Marvel alum. Plus, he's really good in uh, Blade Runner 2049 and the opening of that. And, and uh, Brie Marvel Lars- alum. What's up? Yeah. Brie oh, and another Marvel. Captain, You're right. Captain Marvel. So we yeah, had yeah. Marvel. Okoye, uh, Drax, and Captain Marvel now. Yep. Eugene Levy now needs to be in a Marvel movie. I'm just thinking. I that. would, I would, I mean, I pay to see I don't most know. Marvel movies. Like, I'm a big fan, but <laughs> yeah. like, I would, I would kill for like Eugene Levy. Like, give me Eugene Levy as Professor Xavier. Like, that would, that would just <laughs> be absolutely outstanding. Okay. I'm kind of, I'm anyway. kind of into that. I'm going to so, but the, the ad was pretty good. I mean, the yeah, whole thing so was out the there entire already. ad is already out. And if you go to motor one, you can see it. It starts out. He is on the set. He's drinking a cup of coffee. Brie Larson drives up in a new Nissan Z. Uh, she throws him the keys. Initially, he can't drive the stick. Um, he drives around a little bit. He gets into it. It turns into an action movie. He grows his hair long. Um, Dave Bautista flies into the car and it's this whole big action movie. And at the end, it turns out they're all in a theater watching it and they walk out and Brie Larson says, I'm driving now. And she gets into a Nissan Aria and they drive away. And it's a cute, fun ad. Honestly, it's, it, it's a fun ad. I mean, it's, it's a neat. It ad, feels like a typical, typical Super Bowl ad. It does. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does. It's a neat ad, but I don't think it's going to stand out. I don't think it's going to be either. Standout. I don't think it's going to be the no. standout for the, for the automotive crew. I think the standout no. for the automotive crew is going to be where you're going with this. It has to be Kia. It, it, now, oh, yeah. now, mind you, I'm a big Dr. Evil fan, and we're going to get to that one in a minute. But this Kia ad, I, I think somebody said in the comments, either here or somewhere else that I saw, it's like, it should be freaking illegal to use dogs in commercials. And but this robot dog has been doing it for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this isn't even a real dog. It's it's robo dog. It's a robot dog. And Kia revealed their commercial earlier this week as well. And it's just like a one minute spot. I showed it to my wife actually last night for the first time. And she was just absolutely dying. I mean, look at those puppy dog eyes. You got to go to motor one podcast or go to motor one.com. Look up our article here. Those are the best robotic puppy dog eyes anyone <laughs> has ever seen. How can you not fall in love with that that's, little that's boy? Gonna my, that's going to be my iPhone wallpaper. For oh, sure. look at that little boy. And of course, it, it's a very simple ad. The dog, it, it's Robo Dog. He's in a store, the puppy in the window. Outside the window, there's a guy that's just unplugging his Kia EV6. And the dog is, I mean, Bonnie Tyler, Total Eclipse of the Heart is playing in the background. And it's there's this whole just just this love family thing going on. The door to the store opens and the dog's like, I'm going home with that. Runs out the door. So now the chase is on. The the e, the Kia EV6 is driving away. Robodog's trying to chase him down, jumping across buildings. The little light on its neck turns from green to red. The chart is almost over. The dog jumps off the roof, trying to reach the Kia before it's too late. And then boom, they kill the dog. What? You can't kill the dog. But wait, 
The dog's eyes open back up. The guy's out of the Kia EV6, recharging Robo Dog. It's a big happy ending. You're rooting for the dog the whole way. This is this is going to be the best one for this year, and I it's think it's going to be. Ad. I think it's going to be one of the best automotive ads. It's going to be right up there with Darth Vader, you know, with Kid Darth Vader. No, 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 no. The that, is, that is a legendary ad. I'm no, sorry. It, no, I, I can't. I can't that's have that's that. a legendary. No, this this will be right up there with it. I think. Come on, look at those uh. eyes, Brandon. Look at those eyes. This the, this ad dog. does not have the Imperial March or a tiny kid dressed as Darth Vader. No, like, hey, that, I'm not taking anything away from that. Cute, ro- cute robotic, this one, cute robotic dog, great. Not Darth Vader. This this one just this it just hits every single button. Kia, T- tiny, well done. Tiny Vader is the best ad that has been out in the last twenty years. Tiny Vader oh, is man. right there at the top. Okay. I but I hey this this has a spot at the top too. I think. Okay, real quick, this one is this one doesn't seem like it's going to be as good, but hey, who knows? Uh, we only seen I think this is a 15 or 20 second teaser. Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to uh, is working with BMW on their ad. Schwarzenegger is playing Zeus um, in the teaser that we've seen. He tries to order a cup of coffee and the barista can't pronounce his name correctly. And then he bristles with electricity like he's going to shock him. And is, it, is his name in the ad Zeus or is his name in the ad Schwarzenegger? No, his name in the ad Zeus. How can you not pronounce Zeus? I I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it's, so, at the okay. end, it, I can I, I can think, mispronounce anything just for the record. I th- so I think the interesting thing about this is that Arnold is a pretty like clearly a like avowed like Mercedes fan. Like he is he's from Graz where they also build the G wagon. Mm-hmm. Um, he was at the debut. I, I actually saw him. I didn't get the chance to meet him, but I saw him in person much shorter than you would expect uh, at the debut of the G wagon in Detroit at, in like 2018, 2019. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about how he ended up teaming up with, with BMW. Cause that's kind of a change of pace for him. Okay. Uh, then the tagline at the end is something electric is brewing, which is obviously a pun with brewing coffee. That's all we know. I, I was the one that wrote this story. I guessed it's probably has to do with the, either the IX or the I4, um, but we don't really know right now. So it was just a teaser. But yeah, Smith, do you want to finish this out? I'll I'll finish this out with what could be a very cool freaking ad to come up for the freaking Super Bowl because Doctor Evil is back with General Motors. Yeah, he's coming back with General Motors. He's going to do this. He's going to do this. And the the and the entire family. I'm, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to. I haven't done that impression in forever. I used to be really good at it, but then you you're know, not there good no, at it anymore. There, there, were, there were no new Doctor Evil. Games. There were no new Austin Powers movies for 20 years, and I and I lost my neck. No, GM just started this teaser campaign. We didn't know it was coming. Um, it it first actually popped up over the weekend with Rob Lowe. Actually, Rob Lowe shared a, uh, an, an in, on his Instagram, uh, a video of, of him, which we um, have embedded in our article at motor one.com where you can see all of these teasers. Um, hopefully by the time the podcast airs on Friday, the full ad will be out there because they've just been dropping video after video showing, okay, Dr. Evil is laughing, and now, okay, here's Scott Evil laughing, and now here's Frau laughing, and now here's number two laughing, um, and then they finished it up just today as we're recording with the gang is back for good. Everybody in is their hashtag. It's going to be about something electric because they've been emphasizing the EV and evil, mm-hmm. and their tagline says EV, so hopefully they're not going to proclaim you know, they're the princess of Canada or something like that. But <laughs> Hey, it's, it's, I'm a big fan of the Austin powers franchise. I would love to see another movie come back. Um, the first two are good. The third one kind of loses. The, the, the third one was, was going off the rails. The third one is, I'm sorry. The third one is the best of the bunch. No. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> oh. because apparently you want, you, want, you want to know why Michael Caine. That's why. Yeah, okay. but I, I, Mike, Michael Caine was good in that, but it, but it's still, well, for starters, BT, it looks like GM doesn't even acknowledge the third film because if you remember at the end of the third film, he loses his hair. I, yeah, Scott we, Evil we is this. bald, and now now he's got a full head of hair, and he's an adult. Zip it, zip it. So yeah, all right, that's enough. We can't do this anymore. <laughs> that's that, that's enough. I, I have to. I have to step away. I'm a big fan of Doctor Evil. So so 
we have 10 minutes just about left. We prepared a cheap car challenge. It was $3,000 to find an off-roader that you would buy for $3,000. Um, I So for 10 minutes, if we all go quick, I think we can all get one in. Are you guys game for that? I'm game. Brandon, do you got anything to go? Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. It, so go, okay. you guys go ahead. I just got to pull up the link. All right, Bruce, no you problem. go first. You, you yep. go first. Vamp for me one second while I pull up this link, and I will be good to go. Well, I will vamp by saying that the one that I found at lunch is already sold, so it was Ooh, a really well, that's a disqualification. It was a really good choice, but I have well, I'll I'll show that one, but then I have a I have a second choice. I couldn't find the off road Mustang like I wanted. Oh well. So uh, I I just shared I just shared my link with you guys, Smith. If you okay. want to open that up. All right, I'm gonna go first, but yeah, yeah we'll, you go ahead and we'll go first. handle sharing that. So. I found 1994 Jeep Cherokee Sport lifted. It's got a bunch of miles on it, but it's $2,300. The guy says no trades, cash only. Uh, it's <laughs> not great. It's not no, perfect. No trades, cash only. Bill of sale. But clearly this was, was filmed or uh, photographed recently because it's clearly in Ohio and there's a bunch of snow. If it's a lifted Cherokee, it's going to go wherever you want it to go. There's a huge aftermarket for it. You know, you can fix whatever you need to get fixed. It's, you know, not perfect, but if I got to go off road and for three grand, I, I can't think of something better, at least in my area from what I found. And I mean, you could still use it for some normal type duties if you if you really wanted. Oh to. yeah, it does. It's not like stupidly lifted where you could never drive it for something. Like yeah, you could. It's just you know. I, I mean, it's not like missing was. fenders and floorboards and and no, not at all. Like it, it's all there. Um, it like yeah, it's not perfect, but it seems you know it seems fine. Well, and so, and let's be honest. I mean, I mean, Jeep Cherokee is sort of the the default it, answer in this in this category is it not anything with that four liter straight six is just bulletproof so you're never gonna have to worry about the engine into that car right and yeah. and you're not gonna find you're not gonna find any wrangler that runs for under three grand and, and yeah i could when you look at when you look at a jeeps you're never gonna find a wrangler that that runs and is at least halfway serviceable for three grand so cherokee is gonna be the next choice okay brandon so you like quick pick Yep, I will pull again I've, vamp I've for got, me, and I'll pull Brandon's up. Oh, you got well, it. I've got, go I've got Brandon's it. already to go here, and uh, cool. it's I gotta say, it's an interesting choice. Brandon, can you uh, tell us about it here a little bit? Yeah, so this is a vehicle that I have I've always wanted one of these. Um, I'm, oh, I'm, wow, I, okay. I will get one at some point. It is a Land Rover Discovery Two uh, SE. Look at this. That's and a gorgeous a, condition. I mean, runs. well, there, there there are some warts. There, it looks like it's been in a teeny tiny crash up front, and I'm deeply concerned about what hides underneath those front seat covers. Um, and the headliner is a little bit saggy, but they've done some work on it. Uh, it has a couple of other small mechanical issues, like a key fob. It, it doesn't want to lock. But wait, 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 wait! The, that headliner is not a little saggy. It looks like it's velcroed into place. It's okay, but it's, it's okay, fine. So we're talking about three thousand dollar cars here, like three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollar. It's a three thousand dollar nineteen year old Land Rover with one hundred sixty two thousand miles on it. I I can forgive a little bit. Yeah, the, the damage the body, on the front isn't bad. It just the, it's yeah, got, it's, the, it's a front clip. I mean, got that, a that, that's tap. relatively easy to produce or to replace. Like the rest of the body looks like it's in really good shape. Um, you know, these cars, I've I've oh. always found them incredibly incredibly cool. Like I like I sure you can go off road in it. I don't give a shit about going off road in that car. Like I just want to drive it around because <laughs> it is so so cool. I respect that. Yeah, I. I mean, is it is it as cool when it's on the tow track? I don't care. I mean, yes, it probably is. Like that that car, like when it's running, like it is when it's running. It shows. It shows. You know, you could buy a. Like headline, like I've had it for my first car's headliner was worse than that. So yeah. I, I, that's I've, not I've, that bad. I, so in, in researching this, like I looked for like a Nissan Xterra and I, I tried to oh, avoid I one of those Jeep because I didn't want to I didn't want to go with like the obvious choice. Um, I looked for, at Forerunners. I found a couple of decent Forerunners and Xterra, Xterras, um, even a Land Cruiser for a little bit above three grand. 
but man like this is the one like i would want to drive one of these every day like it that car is so damn cool to me that it, it like i don't even care about how reliable it is it is <laughs> it is a black disco 2 it is really really cool i hate i hate that you're not wrong i want to yeah, i want to trash you a little bit this is a cool find for three grand and yeah you know what at three grand anything could be unreliable i love the way these look the interior really isn't that bad the front bumper isn't really that bad i, I love the safari roof i love the windows on the roof there I, like the wheels like the the stance the proportions everything about the design is perfect it's black with a, a beige interior like that's awesome Again, I'm terrified of what's under those seat covers. Um, They're just seats. Like, nothing that a power at, washer can't get rid of. I'm worried three. about tears of leather. That's what I'm worried about. So, so here, here's but the, beyond that, like, I, I, I love it. Like, three grand for that, you know, hell yeah, sign me up. Yeah. Real quick, here's my philosophy going into this, is that we are just at the peak coming down of probably what used car prices are going to be, there is no, literally no good choice for $3,000 in terms of an off-roader out there. Anything you pick is going to have a compromise somewhere. I, yep. My compromise, it's not pretty. It's not, you know, super usable, but it's, you know, it's going to work. Brandon, yours isn't going to be reliable, but it's pretty. But Smith, it's so goddamn what was pretty. your compromise? <laughs> What was mine? Okay, well, let me share. I'll have to share two because the first one already sold, and I'm going to jump okay. to that here right now. It is also a Jeep. It is also a Jeep Cherokee, but it's a two-door Cherokee right-hand drive former mail truck. Oh, that's neat. That's cool. Uh, Two hundred sixty-three thousand miles. It was for two grand. For two grand. Yeah. And and you know where it was? Rapid City, South Dakota. This is right wow. here. I never, the only way I can ever do these cheap car challenges with something local is if it's like a truck or off-roader because that's all it, that there is out here. And I mean, yeah. I, I would rock the hell out of that. Totally. That, that two-door Jeep Cherokee, yes, with the right-hand drive. Um, I mean, it, it says it still runs and drives good. It's obviously- The wheels are terrible. The, the wheels are actively hateful. You you don't notice the like the, like the missing. Uh, I don't, I don't care of, about that. The I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the the <laughs> awful aftermarket wheels. Well, I'll just take a look at the awful um big board on the inside where the passenger seat's supposed to be because well that's, that's where functional they, though that's where you that's put where the they mail. Hold, yeah that's where, yeah, that's where they hold the mail. I mean you could never. I will drive. say I'm I am a sucker for right hand drive vehicles. Like, you could never I pass give up a, a lot car of things though, for right hand drive vehicles because it, you, there's no possible way to see into oncoming traffic to pass a car. But hey, you know what? It's got one seat in it. It's a two door. It would be nimble, four wheel drive. Man. Yes, man. Take it, take it off road. But forget that your was, mono. That's a much cheaper single seater. That was that was available True. as of six hours ago, and it already sold. So we know and that it was literally really hauls the mail. We talk about that a lot. This card <laughs> literally <laughs> hauls the mail. So my my backup choice is still available and it's a 2002 Isuzu Ooh, Rodeo Sport D6 for 26 4 by 4 170,000 miles 2650 um runs great fully loaded automatic power everything two sunroofs half top comes off ice cold AC it's small it doesn't have a lot of power but it's not i mean it's not like pathetic oh Th this would be, this would be this would be fun and actually quite capable off road because it's smaller in stature. You can maneuver it around mm -hmm. um, and it will still have some regular so, everyday so, functionality and it doesn't look bad either. I don't think. No, I think so, that's aside from the vehicle cross, are we like at like a point where like a Suzu's are becoming like kind of silly, desirable things. They Wait, could be what's well, wrong with the vehicle cross. Are you saying that's not desirable? I think the vehicle cross is awful. But that, yeah, well, but I, I understand. I understand why Welcome people to like them. I, I, I only, I only bring this up because Smith, you mentioned this car, and as I was coming home from the grocery store earlier, in my neighborhood was an Isuzu Ascender, which is the uh, Chevy Trailblazer, like the the old body on frame V8 powered Trailblazer, also the Saab 97X and uh, uh, GMC Envoy. And I, it just got me thinking about this. Like, is is a Suzu 
do for a resurgence where people are like, I, I kind of want one of these. Like the Axiom looks amazing. I like, think this, that this, there is an ironic coolness to a Suzu that you had with the Pontiac Aztec for a while. Mm-hmm. I've legitimately loved the Via Cross since it was new. So it I think the Axiom looks amazing. I think that is one of the best designs of of that generation. Well, do you want me to short circuit this by saying I started off by looking for a Suzuki X90 and I couldn't find one? <laughs> oh yeah, you're not. <laughs> I, t- I I'll tell you what I. In fact, I'm going to search for one right now because I bet I could find a. <laughs> I bet I can find a, a really really good uh, Grand Vitara, which is like a stout little off roader. Yeah. Let's oh, see. While Brandon is searching, I was going to show my cheater choice, which um, I will pull up here. Because well, I said I, some, something to take off road. Well, while you're bringing up the cheater choice, I'll share my. I'll just mention my cheater choice was a 2002 uh, Toyota. Uh, what was that? A Toyota Del- It must have been mislabeled. Has uh, one thousand one hundred ninety dollars instead of eleven thousand nine hundred ninety dollars because it was a nice quad cab Toyota truck. I mean. It was, it was, Thing was spot on, but that so would have been my cheater choice. choice of a vehicle to take off road was a 1978 oh, Kawasaki 440 Invader. Look at for four hundred dollars, and it's got a pop up headlight. Tell me that's the coolest me. thing. You're a killing me. Singular pop up headlight. And I grew up with snowmobiles. Dog. I don't think the dogs included. <laughs> I'm I'm still a snowmobiler, even though I don't have one. That thing is hot, man. Yeah, a, a 78 Kawasaki 440 in 1978. That was. That was the thing to have, man. So that was my that was the choice. thing to have. So I just love I the pop up headlight. Yeah, I can't find a a Grand Vitara for less than you know three grand, but I did okay. find. Show this. me one. Though, I just quick. shared it. Okay, so I'll pull it up for you. This this one was ten grand. It's a 2011 Grand Vitara. Um, I have a ton of seat time in these things. I've driven through driven them through some like serious storms. They are excellent little off-roaders like it and it looks good too like that is that is an attractive vehicle yeah it's it's definitely not the quirky styling that you would expect no but you know what it is it is simple it is reliable it has i want to say it's a locking a rear locker and a proper low like low range gearbox in that um it's it's a great little off-roader yeah okay well, speaking of simple and reliable, hopefully that's what you get from this podcast. Everybody exactly. out there listening, we love that you listen. Email us at podcast at motor one.com. Comment on our motor one YouTube page, motor one podcast, comment on our article, hit every single like button, subscribe button, do all the social stuff. Um, there's the review feature at Spotify that Bruce has been talking about. You need to do reviews for our podcast at Spotify. Tell your friends. We're going to be doing some crazy stuff in the future. And Brandon, as always, thank you very much for joining us. Where can folks follow you on social? You can follow me. And God, I, you know what? I'm terrible at this. I don't even remember my handle. <laughs> you can follow is Brandon. Brandon. Turkus. I swear it is, buddy. <laughs> it- I thought it was. I, I don't remember. for <laughs> So I'm, I'm actually I'm looking it up because I'm very bad at this. Um, it is at Brandon Turkus on Twitter and no it is at B Turkus on Instagram. And you can't follow me on Facebook because I don't accept new friend requests. So sorry. And obviously you also want to catch Brandon's articles as they go up on motor one.com. What am I forgetting, Bruce? Um, so real quick, um, anyone who has listened to this far is clearly a hardcore fan. So hardcore fans get to do special stuff. Um, next week, we are going to have car collector Myron Vernus on mm, as a guest. That's gonna be a good he one. is from uh, Akron, good. Ohio, and he has an insanely cool car collection. Um, probably the, the highlight these days, if you've seen, he has a Nissan Autech Zagato, which is essentially a Nissan Skyline with a Zagato body on it. And one, just- of, one of the prettiest cars i have ever seen in my life like it's bar none i and i know uh, off the top of my head i can't they made less than 50 i want to say it's like 29 something like that and he has one of those um and he just has an amazing collection um and he's going to be our guest next week and so we're really happy about that so if you listen to this far and you're a fan and you have a question for him send it our way because i'll ask him um 
Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. We appreciate all of your all of your comments. Um, I'm generally the person that goes through the comments on YouTube. So you, if you see someone respond, it's generally me. Um, I'm responding this week. So go there and check it out. Okay. But yeah, we love your comments. Oh, one last thing. Again, if you're listening this far, we haven't had any emails in a while. So podcast at motor one.com. If, if there's anything you want to tell us about, talk to us about anything like that, send it there. Cause we haven't seen an email in a while. It's mostly been YouTube comments. Yeah. But, share us your cool yeah. cars. Yeah, totally. you know, it doesn't if always gotta, have to be about what we talked about here. If you've got totally. a cool car that you want to share, you're really proud of. Um, if you're really jealous of your neighbor's car, if you have yeah. just if you just have the biggest POS in the world and you're like, yeah, can you critique my car? Oh, we should know, do that. We, we should do that as a feature. We, like, we can absolutely I, critique yeah, your car. Totally li li listener cars. Like, listener not cars. Even like, just be like, come on and tell us about your car. Yeah, there we've, you go. we've talked about doing that. We just have to find people who are willing to do that. That's the, the thing. Um, Come yeah. make yourself podcast famous. Exactly. Um, but thanks, everybody. Brandon, thanks for being with us. Smith, as always. And good night, everybody. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Good night.